understood and accepted any of you who believe that any lighthearted tone today is not respectful enough. I will ask your forgiveness again in advance and on the back end for uh, how to discuss this today because I have found it difficult to discuss as uh, new information isn't coming in just yet, and Damar Hamlin suffers cardiac arrest uh, following a hit on Monday night. So we will get someone for you here, Kelsey Conway, Cincinnati Bengals beat reporter for the Cincinnati Inquirer and USA Today, who was there and can help us navigate some of this stuff with the reporting. And I will just apologize to you because I don't know how to do the show correctly today in the face of something that doesn't have any precedent in in my career kelsey thank you uh for joining us uh can you uh sort of take us through how he what information is new on how damar hamlin is doing what we know about his condition yeah uh just fo first following up on what you just said i've never covered anything like this in nine years of covering the nfl either so um you know i think grace is welcomed by everyone in this situation we're all just trying to do the best we can and keep everybody informed uh but as far as new information um as of 3 a.m last night there has been nothing else reported following the bill's statement saying that he did suffer cardiac arrest and that he is in critical condition at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, which is about five minutes away from Paycor Stadium, where he was taken by ambulance and police escort. Um, so there hasn't been more information, but it is notable that last night the hospital PR was supposed to do a press conference and they opted not to uh, last minute. So not sure what exactly that means. But there was nothing to say from the hospital. They didn't want to give any information. And I think the hospital realized the magnitude of where this story was getting to. And I've heard that the hospital is absolutely slammed with traffic today with news reporters. So nothing, nothing new to report as far as anything regarding his condition. Uh, but those are just some things that I wanted to update you guys on regarding the surrounding pieces of what's going on. What can you tell us, having been there, about what those few hours uh, were like for for the people involved? So do you guys remember the week four game between the Bengals and the Dolphins, the Thursday night game when Tua suffered that first head injury, the concussion that kind of started this whole conversation about the NFL, if they're handling concussions the right way? Remember that, that head injury? Yep. So I was in the same seat in the press box for that. And that was a pretty bone chilling moment, of course, just seeing two a laying there. But what I said last night and I tweeted it, this was 10 times worse. And that was a really scary moment. And the reason I say that, because typically, as you guys know, you've covered football for a long time they try to get the players off the field as quickly as they can, no matter how severe the injury is, they try to get them off the field to resume the game. He was not moving and they couldn't, they couldn't get, I saw them putting the backboard onto the field, back onto the ambulance. It looks like nobody knew what was going on. And then from the press box, you're seeing someone just like moving up and down and it looks like they were doing CPR. But as a journalist, you don't wanna just say that and that not happen. And then, you know, you look silly for saying that. But then once it was confirmed that they were used, that they were doing CPR, it was still like a pin dropped in the press box, in the stadium. It was, and that's, that game was completely sold out. You couldn't hear anything and you're just sitting there. And what really got me was I was keeping an eye on Bill's coach, Sean McDermott. And he was in the back of the ring kind of surrounding the, the player and the medical staff. And he was squatting with his hands in his like his head in his hands, he couldn't even look up. And that to me was the sign of this coach knows that something is tragically wrong. And then they finally, after some time, were able to get him into the ambulance. But then there was this like awkward, eerie silence of, well, what's going to happen next? Is the game going to resume? And it's still nobody saying anything. And then you see players kind of start to move around some and you're thinking, OK, wow, they're going to play this game. And then you just see a couple minutes after Zach Taylor walked from the Bengals sideline over to the Bills sideline 
has a conversation with Sean McDermott, the two refs come over, and then you just start to see Bills players go to the locker room, and then Bengals players go to the locker room. And then I went down to the locker room floor, and I saw Joe Burrow and a couple of the other Bengals team captains, Sam Hubbard, and a couple other players with Zach Taylor walk from the Bengals locker room over to the Bills locker room. And based off what we found out from Troy Vincent last night, that that was when the two teams decided to postpone the game. It wasn't the league's decision to postpone the game. It was on the two teams that decided that this game shouldn't be played at that particular moment. And then I saw the Joe Burrow go back to the Bengals locker room. And within like five minutes, several Bengals players, including T Higgins, walked out in their street clothes to leave the stadium. And then it was just like, okay, now what? And then the focus turned to what's going on at the hospital. So it was weird in that it took the medical professionals so long on the field, which is something I've never seen before, but the way that they were moving and the speed that they were trying to operate and the speed that they got to him was as fast as I've ever seen signaling that everyone knew the extent of just how bad the the situation was. What can you tell us about the accuracy of reporting around the decision-making process where it was the, a lot of people felt helpless. A lot of people immediately criticized the NFL. Maybe that criticism is fair. I think everybody was dealing with something that was unprecedented. What can you tell us is accurate about the reporting? The decision was just made by players and coaches. Yeah, we can't play in this condition. So all I'm going off of is what I was told from the league office. And um, I, I was the one that asked the follow-up question about how the communication takes place. And what we were told, several media members were on a conference call at 12 o'clock last night with Troy Vincent and two other people from the league office that Troy Vincent was in constant communication with the white hat referee and the they have an emergency action plan in place. And when the ambulance left, there was no, the NFL said there was no five minute warm up grace period instructed to happen on the field. They bul they balked at that and said, that is not true and that's ridiculous and that they never had any intention to do that. So they quickly refuted that. What they did say was, they left it up to the teams to decide what to do. And that's when all of that took place in the locker room between the Bengals and the Bills. And that's why they made the decision. And, you know, you can spend time going back and forth saying, was the league lying or making that up? But I just think this is such an unprecedented situation that in a normal protocol in the NFL games, when an injury happens that it's an extended period of time is missed, there's a warm up period regulated. So that might have just been in people's heads that, you know, that's how it goes. Um, so I don't really think it's right to judge anyone for making any knee jerk reaction. Nobody has ever dealt with a situation like this. But from what I was told from the league office, that there was never any t any warm up period instructed and that they really did leave it up to the teams to make the final call in this game. Uh, you are a Bengals beat reporter, so I'm wondering how emotional was that locker room? What were some of the things those guys were saying in that locker room? And just kind of put us there if you can. So we weren't allowed in lo the locker room. Uh, the, neither the Bengals or the Bills did any media. No coach, no player, nobody did anything. But I was, like I mentioned, on the locker room ground level. And um, I actually tweeted the picture but I, I tweeted a picture of T. Higgins walking out with his mom. Um, he has his arm around her. And I just thought that that was important because all of the attention should go on to Mar Hamlin. I, I, no question. But T. Higgins is also involved in this, too, in terms of how you deal with, you know, what happened. And, of course, it wasn't his fault and it was a tragic accident. But. I, there are there needs to be some prayers and love sent T Higgins way because if you think about the stress and how he's going to deal with you know the thought of you know the tackle it was him tackling T and you know you're human right you can you can't not have compassion for that um, but he just looked he didn't say a word when he walked by and he immediately just went to his mom 
And if you know anything about T. Higgins' story, uh, he's been through a lot in his life and um, his mom is his rock. So the fact that the Bengals were able to get his mom out of the suite to bring her down to the locker room to make sure he had some comfort, I thought was an important part of the story to tell. Kelsey, forgive me if this is ignorant. I think we have a general working knowledge of what critical uh, condition is. But do we know? I know you said there are no updates since 3 a.m. Is there any credible reporting about how he's doing and what degrees of of critical condition means? Like, is there how much hope is there anywhere in the reporting that you have seen, heard or done? The only reporting that I've seen is from DeMar's marketing agent that initially said that he's in critical condition. And then a, a, a recent report um, was, I believe, from a, a spokesperson that said, you know, his family, you know, they're taking things minute by minute, day by day as he continues to fight for his life. So uh, there's been nothing, nothing with more details released at this moment that I've seen or I've heard, and I've been following this thing pretty closely. But, um, you know, he's fighting. They say he's fighting for his life. So that's that's all we can go off of right now. Kelsey, thank you for being on with us. Of course. Thanks for having me on.